Hello and welcome. My name is Ksenia Ryuma and I'm a solutions engineer here at HashiCorp. And today I would like to invite you to consider and define AutoNSIL, HSM and SIL wrap and find out the benefits those can bring to you and your organization. If any of those terms are not familiar to you, we'll discover them later in presentation. So you'll find out all of those and how to use them. <laughs> Let's start with definition of why. Here is just like a summary recap on when you use Alton Seal, HSM, if such present, and Seal Wrap, you'll provide a simplified yet secure way to unseal your vault and manage vault operations. On top of that, you can meet your compliance and regulatory requirements. So let's consider vault architecture in order to better understand this seal and unseal state. We have a lot to cover, so let's jump into the discussion. By the way, if you have and when you have any questions, please feel free to stop me and ask those questions. Here you can see what we usually define as a vault cluster. And that usually comes with a three, maybe more, vault nodes and some backend storage. Here you can see backend storage is defined by console. And if you're talking about vault enterprise, there is another option to consider as a backend storage as integrated raft storage. Difference between two we can discover like after or next presentation and just for the matter of this presentation let's talk back about seal and unseal state when vault server is started and obviously that usually comes after you deploy vault and by the way you can use terraform to stand up the vault that makes it even easier it starts in a sealed state in this state vault is configured to know where and how to access the physical storage, but it doesn't know how to decrypt any information stored there. Unsealing is a process of obtaining the plain text master key necessary to read the decryption key to decrypt the data, allowing access the vault. We'll talk about the relation between storage key and master key in the next slide. So here we're we'll just like giving you the preset Prior to unsealing, almost no operations are possible with Vault. So, for example, authentication, managing the secret engines are not possible. The only possible operations are to unseal the Vault and check the status of the seal. You might ask why unsealing is needed. So the data stored by Vault is encrypted. Vault needs the encryption key in order to decrypt the data. Here you can see the uh, topology of the vault that you might be familiar, such as you accessing vault information through API, CLI, or maybe UI. And no information is leaving vault in unencrypted form to its storage backend. So we want to find out the way how we getting the storage key. So let's see how that process happens. Information stored in the storage backend is encrypted using storage key that you can see in diagram, which is encrypted by master key. And no secret leaves the cryptographic barrier in, in unencrypted form. This barrier is protected by a set of keys and information served through the HTTP API is encrypted by TLS. When Vault is initialized, it creates a, an encryption key that processes all its data. The encryption key is protected by master key. And by default, Vault uses Shamir's secret sharing algorithm to split the master key into shares. You can configure the number of these shares in your Vault configuration and also you can configure the minimum number of required shares to reconstruct master key. By best practices, those shared keys need to be distributed to different personas. 
So usually to shareholders or stakeholders, whoever who manages fault. Now, the downside of the best practice is whenever you need to unseal vault, you will need to reach out to those people. And for example, let's say you have maintenance window at let's say 3 a.m. at Pacific time, and you need to restart your vault server. You will have to wake some people who would say located on the East Coast or maybe in Europe in the middle of the night to make this operation happen. Also, the practice to introduce some risk about how you're storing those keys, how you're distributing them, and using Shamir and sealing is a very manual process. As a recap again, what we have covered in this link is that in order to reconstruct the master key who protects the encryption key, you need to have a set of the keys to make encryption key available to the vault so the vault will be able to reach and decrypt the information from a storage backend. While the Shamir unsealing is definitely an option to unseal vault, let's consider the better ways to unseal it. In other way, let's move out from manual approach to more automated one. And for the most users, unseal will provide a better experience. Vault Auto Unseal delegates the responsibility of securing the unseal key from users to trusted device like HSM or services. The trusted device can be considered as hardware secure model, short for HSM, and cloud services. And those can be Ali Cloud KMS, Amazon KMS, Azure Key Vault, Google KMS, and Vault pulls its encrypted master key from storage and transit it through the HSM or one of those like cloud services that we listed for decryption via PKSCS number 11 API. Once the master key is decrypted, Vault uses this master key to decrypt the encryption key to resume Vault operations. At the end of the day, as again, reminder, we are trying to decrypt our encryption key so we have access to our Vault backend storage to get our secrets in decrypted way. The great thing about the, this solution is that in the most cases, it's HSM that brings FIPS certification and Vault honors that by wrapping the master key. With that in mind, let's see what Vault and HSM integration brings us. Even though in this presentation, we're focusing or highlighting HSM, keep in mind that the same way you can use any of those cloud services that we listed, and as long as they provide this FIP certification or another word, as long as they support PKCS number 11, you can stay compliant and meet your regulations. What are the features of Vault and HSM integration? So this feature that comes with Vault Enterprise offering and uh, let's consider like each one of those and what they mean. Automatic unsealing. Vault stores its HSM wrap master key in storage, allowing for automatic unsealing. Again, for this purpose, you can use any of the cloud services that we just listed. Master key wrapping. HashiCorp Vault protects its master key by transiting it through the HSM for encryption rather than splitting into the keys. Again, we are moving away from manual approach, having those splitted keys into more automated one using HSM or cloud providers. Having seal wrap, um, you can provide FIPS key storage conforming functionality for critical security parameters. And those can be defined by the level security you need to enable at your organization. And entropy augmentation is more advanced topic. We're not going to get more in, in depth with that. I'll just give you a definition such as the 
low volt leverages HSM for augmented system atropy via PKCS number 11 protocol. Another way, Vault provides you the additional layer of security, or better say, randomization, while it creates its keys. You may ask, what is cryptographic wrap thing? And definition you can see here on the screen that seal wrap is enterprise feature which wraps value with an extra layer of encryption for supporting seal. And it is something that we're going to see today during the demo, how Vault encrypts the secret using this additional wrap as a seal wrap. And here's the list of benefits you can get. If your organization cares or need FIPS 140-2 compliance, uh, you can achieve that by using seal wrap and HSM or uh, let's say AWS uh, KMS for the purposes that we just listed prior. Um, that also supports FIPS level of security equal to HSM and it allows Vault to deploy it in high security governance, risk management, or talking about compliance. That's what we meant by GRC, or if you have any compliance uh, from the list of PCI, PI, HIPAA. And here's the demo time. Let me walk you through what we're going to see so we all be on the same board. I'm going over view of the flow of what's going to happen. So here are just a couple notes on uh, definitions, what I'm going to imply later. Um, for those who doesn't know what is critical security parameters, in short, what's called CSP is also key for authentication data, which could compromise the security of a cryptographic model. First, we'll establish what it is and what is CSP for our security model. Without getting much in, like, in details, uh, in our demo, we're going to see how Vault encrypts the static secret. What we'll do, we'll create a secret engine, static secret engine with a two different paths. One path we'll define as a without using and seal wrap, where we'll store the password as my long password. Another pass that we'll define in this secret engine, we'll mark it as a seal wrap, where we also store that the same password as a my long password. You might ask why we will do so. So we'll see how that my long password will look by using Vault encryption with seal wrap and without. By calling the pass that intended to be used without seal wrap, we're going to see encrypted password using IES 256 and that string going to be much shorter as in comparison what we're going to see by involving seal wrap and our soft HSM to provide us this additional layer of security. And that additional layer of security comes as the same password going to have much longer string in return. So if anyone <laughs> will get that secret, they won't be able to decrypt it. As we know, the more characters the uh, the secret or encrypted data has, the harder to decrypt that. Let's see how Vault handled that and how that looks in reality. Let me switch my screen and I'll show you how that work. At this point of demo, we already enable our key value secret engine and by running those commands, we're enabling the path where we're not going to use the seal wrap and we will store my long password. As the second pass, we will use seal wrap and we'll store the same password. For the purpose of the demo, we're going to use the local uh, storage to store and retrieve that my long password. And here we are 
getting access to the secret values or secret engines that we enable and by calling to the pass to retrieve the my long password we're going to see that the first value we're getting which doesn't use a seal wrap returns us one line secret and vault use for that purpose is 256 mechanism to encrypt my long password and this is the stage how your password going to be stored at your backend storage if you're not using the seal wrap in case if you need and want to use the seal wrap in our case we're using soft hsm and in second pass that's where we use it we see that the same password as my long password using seal wrap vol gives us additional level of security by providing the longest string the way how my long password had been encrypted by vault and that is the way how you can achieve your compliance and provide the extra level of security for your secrets at the end of this demo or presentation we're going to share that jupyter lab where you can run those commands and see how that work by yourself and your own pace. Now let's quickly summarize what we just seen during our demo. We used key value secret engine where we created two paths. The first pass, we did not use the seal wrap and we stored the password as my long password. As a return, we seen one line response from vault and that my long password being encrypted by vault this is the way you can store that uh, password in a secure manner at your backend storage the second pass that we created we used the seal wrap mechanism in the second pass we involved our soft hsm to provide us that extra level of encryption or extra level of security to encrypt our password and using SoftHSM or any of the previously listed cloud providers, um, you can provide that additional level of security and store the secret at backend of your choice. And as a recap, what we have covered today, we talked about out and seal. And as you probably already know, you can use a HSM for that purpose or cloud providers to help you to jump start and start using vault without distributing those shared keys you can also leverage hsm for meeting your compliance and also for the purpose of out and sealing and providing entropy for providing again <laughs> additional like randomization for creating the keys and encrypting your data and seal wrap and seal wrap again you can rely either on the cloud providers or HSM. The combination of those uh, will provide the simplified yet secure way to unseal your vault and help you to manage vault operations. On top of that, you can meet your compliance and regulatory requirements. Thank you for your attention and please bring any questions if you have those.